Good day everybody. I'm going to be sharing with you today some revision and I'm going to be starting with computers. But before I do that, I'm going to remind you to subscribe if you have not subscribed before. Like, share the videos and please tell a friend or family member up about my channel. Now I have been watching TVJ's class time and it has been good. I have been screenshotting some of the information so that I could create my revision uh, videos for you. So kudos to TVJ. Some of the information that I have to present is from their class time that I had screenshot. All right. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is what is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that manipulates data and information and performs tasks or calculations according to a set of instructions or programs. In other words, computers have the ability to store, retrieve, and process data. And of course, when we talk about process data, we mean that it processes the data so that it becomes meaningful and then it becomes information. Next, we're going to be looking at what we used to use to prepare documents, to do calculations, to communicate, and to store before computers. So in order to create documents, what we used to use are typewriting machine, which is a typewriter. Sometimes we would write and photocopy what we write, as well as we would write or and use carbon copy to get copies of what is written. In terms of calculations, abacus and calculators were used. People still use 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 those two, but it is not in you know used as much now. Computers are what is dominant. In terms of communication, back in the days, telephones, memo, notice board were the main communication devices. Still being used, but not as before. Nowadays, the computer or some form of computing device is used for communication. Same for storage. Where storage is concerned, there were filing cabinets, folders, and boxes. Some places still do it, but they don't use it as much. Or they use a combination of EFS, which is electronic filing system, that is filing via the computer, and these. But some companies gradually are moving away from using these storage devices and are sticking solely with computer storage. All right. Next, I'm going to be looking at the uses of the computer. I may be going a little bit fast, but it's just so that the video is not too long and it's revision. So we're just browsing through. You would have known all of these things already, but you know, this is to just revise with you what you need to know. So we know that we use it to create documents. We use it to research, for email, for real-time chat, via Skype, Zoom, Google Chat, Messenger, and the list goes on. We use it to browse the web, to advertise products, and even to shop. Shop for items, play games, to edit audio, video, and photo, to listen to music and audio, solve mathematic problems, and watch videos, create sound or video like I'm doing now. I'm creating a video using the computer. Next, we're going to be looking at the characteristics of computer. And when I call them or list them, you will realize that they, 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 they are also advantages, some of them. Majority of them are also advantages of computing. Computer. So we have memory, so it has a lot of memory, logical, versat versatility, automation, accuracy, speed, reliability, diligence. So those are the characteristics of computer. We're now going to be looking at software and hardware. Everything you do on your computer will rely on both hardware and software. Software is a set of instructions that tells a computer exactly what to do. 
Hardware, on the other hand, is a physical or it's the physical parts of the computer that are used to process the data, of course, into information. Software cannot be executed without the hardware, and vice versa, hardware cannot perform any task without the software. Software cannot be touched. It's the instructions that tells the computer what to do, so you can't touch it. However, hardware can be seen and touched. Software can only be seen. Software is debugged in case of problems. Hardware is repaired in case of a problem. Software is reinstalled if the problem is not solved. Hardware is replaced if the problem is not solved. Now we're going to be looking a little bit more on hardware. We already said that it is the physical parts that make up the computer system. So these that you're looking at now, these pictures or images, are examples. So we have the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, the keyboard, the printer, and the digital camera. And those are just a few examples. There are much more. We're going to be looking at data and information. What is data? Data is a collection of raw facts, figures, and symbols, such as numbers, words, images, video, and sound, given to the computer during the input phase. And of course, when you look at this, you're thinking, okay, this is just raw facts. It means nothing, you know, in, in, in data term, it means nothing. But when it becomes processed, when the data is processed, it becomes information, which is then meaningful, organized, and useful data. Right? So computers manipulate data to create information. And that is very important to know. Information. Data becomes information when it is put into context. That is given meaning. A barcode number is just data on its own. So is the product name, image, and price. But this data becomes meaningful information when the data is put together. When a barcode is scanned, we can find out what item it is, what it looks like, and how much it will cost. Next, we're going to be looking at input, processing, output, and storage. You input data through input devices, which are keyboard, mouse, scanner, etc. And of course, what you input are sets of instructions. All right, the processing now. The computer processes data by manipulating it. This is done by the CPU, Central Processing Unit. Output. After processing the data, the computer displays the result. It gives an output. Output devices are the monitor, in the case of visual output of course, speakers in the case of audio, printers, etc. Storage. You can save your data for future use in the system unit itself which is stored in the computer's ROM. There are several other storage devices also like the removable disks, which is a thumb drive and, uh, and others, CDs, etc. There are many advantages and disadvantages of using computers, some of which are outlined below. So we had looked earlier on some of the advantages when we were listing the characteristics. So I'm just going to browse through again quickly. So we have speed as one, reliability, consistency, storage, and communication. The disadvantages are health risk. People can get uh, computer vision syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, etc. from using the computer. We have violation of privacy. People can hack into the system and get to your private information and that can be a problem. Public safety. When I talk about public safety, I'm talking about people disclosing their information to predators and they meet with them, sometimes they kidnap them, um, rob them, rape them, and, and things do happen. Impact on labor force, 
when we talk about that, we're talking about people losing j their job. The, 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 the labor force is reduced because of computer. Impact on the environment? In terms of that, we know that some computers um, have non-biodegradable materials and heavy toxic materials, which can be bad for our health. Because, you know, it's in our environment, so we breathe in these things and it, you know, our health deteriorates as a result. When people hear the word computer, they think of a personal computer, such as a desktop or a laptop. However, computers come in many shapes and forms and sizes, and they perform many different functions in our daily lives. When you withdraw cash from an ATM, scan groceries at the store, or even use a calculator, you're using a type of computer. Types of computers. Now we're going to be looking at types of computers. So you have the big bad supercomputer. These are the largest, most powerful category of computers, and consequently they are the most expensive. These systems are able to process hundreds of millions of instructions per second. They are used for applications such as weather forecasting, space exploration, and jobs requiring complex calculations. A supercomputer uses all its power to execute few programs concurrently. Next, we have the mainframe computers. These are large systems that can handle several users, store large amounts of data, and process transactions at a very high rate. Mainframe usually require a specialized environment, which includes a separate air conditioning and electrical power supply. Usually they put a mainframe in a cooling room because of the amount of work and heat that comes from the computer after doing all that work. Mini computer is the next type of computers that we're looking at. So these are small computers that, that are more powerful when compared to the microcomputers which I'm going to be looking at soon. They support a, a number of users performing different tasks and were originally developed to perform specific tasks such as engineering calculations or a production department can use mini computers to monitor certain production process. So maybe manufacturing companies like Grace, etc. would use a mini computer. Mini computers can be used to handle the processing for many users simultaneously who are connected via terminals. Next, we're going to be looking at the microcomputers, also called personal computer or PC. Examples of the PC are desktop, which is a personal computer designed to be set up in a permanent location. Many people use desktop computers at work, home, and school. Desktop computers are designed to be placed on a desk, and they are typically made up of a few different parts, including the computer case, which we call the system um, unit, the monitor, and the keyboard, and the mouse as well. So we're looking at two different types of micro desktop computers, basically. Tower and the horizontal type. Laptop which is a fully functional portable computer which shapes like a book and has a screen, screen, keyboard, pointing device, memory, hard drive, and is battery operational, um, is another type of microcomputers. The second type of computer you may be familiar with is really a laptop, commonly known as a laptop. Laptop computer, commonly known as a laptop. Laptops are battery operated or battery powered computers that are more portable than desktop. Of course, you can walk with a laptop, but not necessarily with a desktop, allowing you to use them almost anywhere. Tablet is another type of microcomputer that we're going to be looking at. So tablets are handheld computers that are even more portable than the laptop. Sometimes, depending on how small it is, it can fold in your pocket. Instead of a keyboard and a mouse, Tablets use a touch-sensitive screen for typing and navigation. The iPad is an example of a tablet. Palm Top is another type of microcomputer. 
It is a handheld computer which usually has limited applications such as appointment books and address books. And people may see companies like Redstripe, the, the drivers or so on um, from the Redstripe truck with something like this. If you look at the image, you may say, oh yes, I can remember seeing one of them with something like this. It's a palm top, right? So a palm top um, is basically called a PDA and it's handheld computers and pocket computers basically. So we are looking at servers now. So a server is a computer that serves up information to other computers on a network. For example, whenever you use the internet, you're looking at something that's stored on a server. Many businesses also use local file servers to store and share files internally. Smartphones. Many cell phones can do a lot of things computers can do, including browsing the internet and playing games. They are often called, called smartphones. Wearables. Wearable technology is a general term for a group of devices including fitness trackers and smartwatches. And I see a lot of people in Jamaica wearing smartwatches. So it's designed basically to be worn throughout the day and these devices are often called wearables for short. Game consoles. A game console is a specialized type of computer that is used for playing video games on your TV. TV. Many TVs now include applications or apps that let you access various types of online content. For example, you can stream video from the internet directly onto your TV. And these days, if you want to have a little theater in your home, you can stream whatever you're watching through your TV screen. Voila, you have a screen, uh, a theater, sorry. <laughs> so guys, this is it. My first revision, which is on computer. So when I put my next video out, I will be revising something else. So these will help people who are preparing for certain exams especially CXC or CSEC, EDPM, and even IT can help with IT somewhat, as you know, this is really basic IT. So guys, I thank you very much for watching on, until the end of this video. I ask you again, remind you basically to subscribe, like, share, comment, and watch the ads. Thank you guys. Bye.